Today, I'll be showing you guys two different ways that you can deform the landscape with PCG. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go into your plugins and turn on procedural content generations. This one right here, turn it on. And you're also going to need to search for patch, which is the easiest way to get landscape patch. And you're going to turn this on. And as you can see, it supports adding landscape patches, which can be attached for meshes to affect the landscape as the mesh is repositioned. And this is what we're going to be using to actually modify the landscape. So turn them both on and go ahead and restart your engine. So to begin with, the first one we're going to do is be able to actually deform the landscape and create paths that are either dug in or dug up from the landscape. And the second one we're going to do is actually create an entire mountain range where you can pipe in your own textures for the mountains and things of that nature and spread them out. For both scenarios, what we're going to do is create an actual landscape first. So let's go ahead and go to our landscape. And I'm going to create this just as default. So now we have a big landscape. I'll go ahead and delete the original floor that was there since we no longer need it. And now we can get started. So for the first one, I'll make a new folder. And this is going to be our PCG pathway. And what we're going to do is create a new blueprint class. There's going to be an actor I'll call it BP pathway deform because this is going to deform our pathway. So in here, what we need to do is actually add one of the new components we just enabled, which is patch. So if I search patch, we have landscape texture patches and just basic landscape circle height patches. For this one, we're going to be using the default circle height patch, but we'll do the texture one next. So if I put that in, you're not going to see much here. Nothing has really changed. You do have some settings on this. You have a radius, a fall off. So let's actually make this a little bit smaller. Let's make it like 200 by 200. Now here you need to specify the landscape. For this, we only have one landscape. So I'll just click on it here and just enable it. So it's going to work for our landscape. And if I already just take this blueprint and just bring it out or try to, you will see this drag drop the landscape patches layer in the list to choose where to edit the layer stack, it should be inserted. Basically, we need to enable editable layers. So if I just click accept, we're good to go. And here in the outline, you can see it has made a new patch manager. So that automatically creates one for you and gets everything assigned. Here is our pathway to form. It is just our blueprint. But now if I pull this up and down, you could see that it is now deforming and it's actually deforming the landscape. So if I can just move this around as much as I want and I can make multiple of these, and I can just deform this any way I want. If I scale this, it will follow accordingly. So now what we need to do is actually have this populated through PCG. I'm going to delete these and let's get ourselves a new blueprint class. This is going to be our actual spline that we're going to use to create the pathway. I'll we'll call this BP landscape path. And for the PCG component, let's go ahead and create one. So I'll make a PCG graph. I'll go ahead and call this PCG pathway deform. And here we're going to add a spline. And it could be just a regular old spline. And I'm just going to make this a bit longer by default. And we also need to add a PCG component. And with the PCG created, let's go ahead and pipe in our current one. So in our PCG graph, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to get our spline data and we're going to sample it with a spline sampler and plug in our pathway into the level. You can see that there's our spline. So if I go ahead and bend this, you can see there's our long points that are actually going to be spreading this out. Now for us, we want on spline, but we don't want subdivision, we want distance. Maybe because of the fall off that we have, we've set the fall off here to 200. So I'm going to set the distance increment to 200 here as well. Then from here, we want to spawn actor. And the actor that we want to spawn is that pathway deformed that we created. And we're going to plug that in. And instead of collapse actors, we can either do merge PCG only or no merging. In this case, we don't have any PCG inside of it, so it doesn't matter which one we do. We can say no merging. You could see it is now spawning all of these. And if I take these and I move it up, you could see it is actually being deformed. But there's a few things that we need to do with this, starting with the fact that we need to actually modify the position of them. So let's get a transform points. Let's plug that into the spawn actor. And for this one, we're going to offset it somewhere between, let's say, let's do negative 100. We're going to move it into the ground 100 units. This way, we don't actually have to have the spline itself inside the ground. We can just have it be where this is. And you can immediately see it is now actually placing it where we want it. I can move it up and I can move it down and it is deforming it accordingly. So I can now draw this out and it will automatically deform to the location that I want it to. So we just carve it out. Now, the actual fall off on this, as you can see, is the 200 units wide. 
and the fall of 200. It's a little bit even everywhere. So let's make a few changes to this. Let's go into our transform points and we can go ahead and give it a random value between zero and negative 100. And then let's change the actual distance here to maybe be 400. And let's also change the scale. Let's go between 0.5 and two. And here we are with this path. And you can see it is now properly carving out the entire path and it is giving a little bit of variation. And if we want to, we can actually take this whole path up into the air and it will just carve it out and carve it in any way you want using this PCG as the spline. Now, this is currently, it's nice, but this is just a simple spline setup and it's a little, it's kind of small scale. We probably want to use this for is to spread out an entire mountain range. So let me show you how to do that because that's a little bit more complicated. And if you guys are enjoying the tutorial so far, I would love to hit the like button. And while you're down there, consider subscribing for more awesome tutorials like this. So for this one, I'll make a new folder. I'll call it PCG Mountain Range. And here we're going to need a few new things, starting with a blueprint that is going to be an actor just like before. And this is our mountain range deform. And, and here we need to add the patch. But instead of adding a regular circle patch, we're going to add a texture patch. Immediately, you can see it is now a large actual rectangle in here. So this is, has quite a few extra settings. Let's start with actually setting up the landscape. Let's select the landscape here in the landscape manager. The patch manager we can select because we've already dragged this into the scene and it's created one in the level. So we can just select it here. If not, we could always have dragged it out and it has, would assign it and create it automatically. But now we want to add controls for this because we want to modify a lot of this stuff from our main actual PCG graph and uh, blueprint that we create. We don't want to modify it on each one of these individually, although we will be able to do that as well. So in the construction script, we're going to add a few controls. Starting with taking the landscape texture patch, I'm going to set height source mode. And the mode that we're going to be using is texture asset, because that is the texture that we're going to be piping into this actual file. The next one is I want to set blend mode. What this is, it allows us to change the blend of how the landscape performs. So an alpha blend will just take the alpha of your texture and use that to blend with the landscape. Additive will add the values together. Minimum will take the minimum value between your actual patch and the landscape itself. And maximum, of course, will take the maximum value. So it will never carve into the landscape. It will only push out of the landscape. Now we want to control this. So I'm going to go ahead and promote this to a variable. Now let's call this blend mode. And I'll go ahead and make it exposed so we can control this on the individual node. But we also want to control the texture itself. So I'm going to drag out and do set height texture asset. And this is going to be the texture that's actually going to be driving this entire thing. And again, I'm going to promote the texture to a variable. I'll just call this texture, make it exposed. The last thing I want to do is control the height of this patch of landscape, because we might want to have it lower or might want to have it higher. Now we can control this by scaling it. That would work, but there's another way of doing it as well. So from here, I'm going to search for set height encoding settings. And if I get this all plugged in, what we can do is take the settings and right click and split it. And now we have zero settings and encoding and settings world space encoding scale. So this right here is effectively our height scale. Now keep in mind, this is based on the size of the actual patch. So if you have a very small patch. The height is going to be relative to that size. So it's going to be quite small. If you scale it to be a thousand, let's say by a thousand instead of one by one, well, that relative to that size, the height is now going to be up to, let's say, a thousand instead of up to one. This is kind of an overall scale of it based on the original size. And instead of making this just a regular variable, I'm going to make this two variables. So I'm going to promote it to a variable and I'm going to call it height scale min. Then I'm going to detach it and duplicate it. And I'm going to have the second one be max, make both of them exposed, I'll bring that in. And I'm going to grab ourselves a random float in range between min and max. And that is going to be our actual world space encoding scale. Now I'm going to set the default of max to be one and the minimum to be zero. So it'll by default either basically not be existent or be at 1.0 strength. Relatively straightforward. So now I'm going to take it and just drag it out. You'll see you'll get a rectangle in the scene. But of course, there's nothing here. Nothing's actually happening because we have not piped in any of these values. 
I've gone ahead and created this height map. I just took a height map I found online and just gave it a fall off. So that way we have effectively a little mountain range. So I'll go ahead and plug that into our texture here. And you can see nothing has happened, but if I drag it up and down, it is deforming, but we just don't see any height. And that's because the height scale is just way too small. So if I make this to be 100, you can see it starts to appear. 1000, again, it is now larger. So if I make this a value between 500 and 1500, you see it starts to appear. Now, it will only deform it based on the resolution of your landscape. So if I made this bigger, you can see not only is it deforming more, it is now has more resolution of the landscape to deform with. And if I make a copy, you can see that it is making copies, but it's also cutting out into them, as you see here. So this is where the blending modes comes in. So if I change this from alpha blend now to maximum, it will only push up. And I can do the same thing for the second one. I can change it to maximum and it only push up. And so effectively we now have a mountain range, which is awesome. And it all blends in together quite nicely. We can go ahead and take this and move it over. We can change the scale on this and it all deforms. And we can also do things like minimum to cut into the landscapes or maximum. And it all depends on what you're trying to do. Of course, you might see where we're going with this. We can now implement it with PCG, but there's going to be a few little extra caveats to get this to work properly. So I'll go ahead and remove all these patches and let's start with creating the PCG graph. And this is going to be our PCG mountain range and our actual blueprint actor, BP mountain range. In our BP mountain range, we want to go ahead and add our spline. And what we're going to do is delete this point right here. Right click on the point spline generation panel. Let's make it a large square. And I'm going to make it quite large. Let's make it 5,000 units by 5,000 units. The detail panel search for closed. We want to make it a closed loop. And now if I drag this out, you can see it's an extra point here. So I want to delete that point. And the original point that's left, you can see it is curved. So I'm going to right click on this point, spline point type linear. And now this is all set. So now we want to add our PCG graph to him and plug in our PCG graph in here. So now this is all set up. Let's open up our PCG mountain range. So like before, we're going to get spline data and we're going to get a spline sampler. And this one, instead of on spline, is going to be on interior. The point spacing, let's set something up like every 500 uh, units and we'll do 450 spacing. And we want to check unbounded. So now if I go ahead and sample this, you can see we're getting our points and they're quite nicely spread out. We're probably going to need far less points than this. So from here, I'll go ahead and get ourselves a select points node. And this will filter out, let's say 75% of the points will be gone. We'll only keep 25% of them. So now you can see we have far fewer points. Now we saw how big we needed to make that patch for it to kind of register. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually make this considerably bigger in scale, but then I'm going to actually modify this sampler and change the distance here. Let's make it 1000 units at 950 interior spacing. And we're going to change it instead of keeping 0.25%, we'll keep only 10% by setting it to 0.1. And that seems pretty good. So from here, we want to get a transform points and we don't want to actually move it up or down. What we want to do is actually just rotate it 360 degrees and we want to maybe adjust the scale randomly. So let's say between one and three. Now, if I sample this, you'll see it is properly doing that, but we have a slight problem. You'll see if I move this up, right? The points come with me and I want it to actually stick to the landscape. Now before in 5.2, we would use this, but if I hover over it, it says deprecated. It is no longer going to be a thing in the future. So let's not get used to it. Instead, what we're going to do is use a projection node and we're going to project these points into the projection, but the projection target, instead of coming from this input, we can get landscape data and we can use that plug into projection target. And if I sample this projection now, if I move this up and down, you can see it is still being projected onto the landscape. Now I can't go too high up. At a certain point, it'll stop projecting, but you can see I am now well above this and it is still projecting onto this landscape. And that's exactly what we want. Now from here, we want to go ahead and spawn actor. Let's go select our mountain range deform blueprint that we created, plug that in and say no merging. So now if we come here, you can see, well, it's being placed, but as you recall, that value that we set is just, it is just way too low. It's just effectively not doing anything. So what we can do is we can go in here and let's change the minimum scale to be something like 
1000 and the maximum scale to be 2000 by default. But the other thing you might recall is we actually don't have a texture in here by default. So for the time being, I'm going to take my texture and set it to be the default in here. And if I hit compile, well, you might notice we have a bit of a problem. And if I move this to the side, you can see immediately what the problem is. It is triggering its own generation and we don't want it to trigger its own generation. So let's fix that. So in our BP mount range, where we have the PCG node, search for the word generate and we want to change it from generate unload to generate on demand. And we want to turn off regenerate PCG volume in editor. So now if I come here and I move this, it won't actually regenerate. I need to go in PCG and click cleanup and generate. And you'll see it is only generated once. What we're going to do is actually expose these effectively to our main graph. So in this PCG, let's go and create some functions. So I'll go ahead and make one called cleanup and one called generate. For the generate one, I'm going to get our PCG and just go generate. Force it and have that plugged in like so. And for the cleanup, we'll do something similar. We'll drag this out and do cleanup. Plug this in and we want to remove all components. And now if you click on either one of these, we can make them call in editor. So if we check that on for both of these, in our actual blueprint here, you can see under default, we have cleanup and generate. So I can click cleanup and it'll go away and generate and it'll generate only once. If I keep clicking generate, you will see it keeps building on top of itself. We don't want that. Now you might be wondering, why don't I just make this a single button? Let me show you. If I take this cleanup, for example, and then I do the generate after in a single button and do the force as before, and now click cleanup, generates it, right? But if I click it again, it will continue to build on itself. And that just seems to be a bug. If I have this disabled and click cleanup, it still builds on itself. It seems there needs to be a delay here, but we cannot add a delay in the construction script. We could do it in the event graph, but then you'd need to actually simulate or play for that stuff to actually happen. So this is the best alternative. So now we can just go ahead and click cleanup, generate whenever we want to actually generate this. Now, as always, the project files are going to be available on my Patreon, where you can join these wonderful people here in supporting what I do. It really means a lot. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord is down below, where we can help answer any questions you have. So thank you so much again to my supporters. And let's get back to it. We already have the start of this landscape, but we want to actually control these and we can, we can go into each individual one because they are blueprints and I can say, okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and move this one over. Let's maybe make this one 5,000 units high. Maybe move it over here and maybe set this one to be max, right? We can do all this, but then we have to do that for each individual one. And we want to do that globally when we spawn all of them. So that way, when we go to our mountain range and do the cleanup and generate again, is still actually using all the settings we want. So to do that, what we're going to do is actually create all the variables in this graph that we created here. What I can do is just click on here and copy all the variables from one to the other. So if I just click in here and paste, I can just copy paste all of these variables as they are in the original into this one. So now we have access to all the same variables. They don't currently do anything, but we have access to them. And this assures that they're also named the same for convenience. So we don't have to remember, okay, which one is this version? Which one is that version? They're just named the same. So now let's start exposing all of these to our PCG graphs. So we can all modify these at spawn and I'll start a blend mode and I'll go ahead and just take this. I'm going to copy the name and then I'm going to go into our PCG graph. And now we need to get ourselves a get actor property. So we need to get access to this variable that we just created. I'll just paste it in. And we also want to get an add attributes node. Now I want to preface this. This matters of how you add it. If I do add attribute here, you can see that it is input is wildcard and output is anything. And if I plug this in here, I can't plug this now in here. So in our case, we're doing the projection here. And if I drag out of here and do an add attribute, you'll see the output is one of these and I can plug it in here, but this will not actually not work. We want it to be a point output for. So I'm going to change the order of this. I'm going to change our projection to come earlier, put our select points at the end. I'm going to have our transform points first. Then I'm going to project our transform points. Then I'm going to filter them. And now here we're left with this node. So if I from here do an add attribute, our output is going to be the same. So this now, this variable of blend mode, we can plug in here and it's going to have this as the output. We no longer need this two point. If you use this two point node, it will not work. So it is very important 
that you have the actual out points as the output. So you can plug it directly into our spawn actor. Order is very important here. And of course you want to plug in into our output target for the attribute blend mode. You can see it goes from blend mode into blend mode. Then in our spawn actor, we can add some actor overrides. So I'll go ahead and open this up. I'm going to pipe in for input source that blend mode variable in the input source and property target. In our case, we have named everything the same. So from two variables are all named the same. So we don't need to worry about the naming setup. But once we have everything plugged in, if I clean up and generate, it's going to be as before. But let's say I change it to minimum and go clean up and generate. Well, it's blank because it's not pushing anything up. It's the minimum is the flat plane. Now for demonstration purpose, I'm going to offset these points. I'm going to add ourselves a transform points here. And just before this, I'm going to plug this in and I'm going to offset them between 1000 down and 1000. You can see what that does. I can go and clean up, generate. So you can see some of them are up higher and some of them are pushed in. So if I now set it to be minimum, you can see it is only pushing them down. Or if I set this to be maximum, it is only going to push them up. It'll never carve into it. So this blend mode is now working correctly. So again, I'll get rid of this transform points. We don't actually want it. And now let's go ahead and set up the other variables. So we have texture, height, scale, minimum, and height, scale, maximum. To make my life easy, I'll go ahead and just take this and I'll just duplicate it three times. I'll pipe that all in here in order and then plug in spawn actor right at the end. For the spawn actor, I'll go ahead and add three extra variables in here like so. And now what we can do is come here and go in order. So I'm going to grab texture. I'm just going to copy the name, go back to our PCG graph. And then we want to replace the property name in the actor property, the attribute name in here. And in the spawn actor, we want to pipe in texture in here and in here. And then we go back and we do the same thing for minimum and maximum. And here we are. The last one is in. So now we have all of them piped in. They're all set up correctly. And again, very important that the output here is points. It all goes in wild carpet out points. So now I can go ahead and actually go ahead and even use our regular alphabet. Well, I'll keep it on maximum. I'll go clean up and generate. You can see it has generated them, but let's now change this to be height max. Instead of 2000, let's say 10,000 and we'll start at 5,000. So if I do clean up and generate, you can see they're far spike here. So now we have this actually varied in height. Now we don't want to go that high, of course, maybe between up to 2000 and we can even change the texture here. So if I go ahead and select a noise, I'll say this tiling noise and I go ahead and generate based on that, we now have it. Now for this noise, it is way too strong. So let's actually just go something like 500 to 1000 for this one. And you can see we're now getting this noise actually pushed up. In our case, we want to keep it on the height map because it looks a lot better. But with this, if I play around with the scale, instead of one to three, we can say one to, let's say 10 for a very large range. And in fact, let's start it at three. So we have a slightly larger mounds overall. These can of course be exposed to your blueprint as everything else, just, just through the actor property overrides in here. But now when I clean up and generate, you can see we're getting ourselves a nice amount range. Now, the beauty of this is these are still all individual setups. So I can just take this and I can move it. I can move it over. I can change the values on this. If I want a very specific number for height, I can just set both of them to be the same. And then we're good. I can change the blending. I can only keep the minimum and I can push this down and you can see it is pulling things down. I can change to be a max and then just really just push up this entire thing. Now, of course, in this setup, it doesn't work. But if I had a nice alpha blend where it is alpha out and has a gradient here, this would work quite nicely. And then when you're happy with it, let's say instead of actually worrying about doing cleanup and generate each time, you can go ahead and just select your PCG and click clear PCG link. And now I have a separate actor entirely. So I can take this graph and just move it over. And it's completely separated now from our actual separate blueprints here. These are their own thing. So now that they're separate, I can do whatever what I want with them. I can move them around. I can scale them. I can place them wherever I need. And you can see we have just basically created a large amount of range relatively quickly with PCG. And we have far more control now. So now you're able to carve in with these paths, with this mountain ranges, and just really use PCG to make your life easier instead of having to manually sculpt a lot of the stuff and have a lot of more control. Because keep in mind, you can add these texture versions or the sphere version to a one of your meshes. So you're able to, let's say, have a house and below it, you're going to just put one of these patches in and you can either do a custom shape with the texture or just use the circle ones. And then wherever you place that mesh, it'll automatically deform to that height. So you can always guarantee that whatever object you have placed in the landscape will match on the ground to be the shape that you want. Now, if you're interested in learning more how to use PCG, 
check out this video right here where I show you how to use PCG to create your own backroom style levels.